the Americans would inevitably get involved on the Israeli side. And that could mean the defeat of your country. No, Matt, that would be the defeat for the global economy. Will Iran respond back to Israeli attack on Iranian soil on October 26? And if they do, how would this attack look like? I follow Iranian media very closely. There are two different kind of voices that you can hear from inside. There's, there, are, there are ones that they're asking for an attack, a retaliation, and there are ones that they're saying we should wait and we're good at this point. But at this moment, it seems like the voices of the ones that they're asking for a strike back, they're louder, they're more, and more people are asking for a strike back, especially after four people lost their life in these attacks. Professor Mohammad Randi was also asked the same question by Channel 4 News reporter. Let's listen to him and see what he answered to the same question. I began by asking how he thought the government of Iran might respond to Israel's strike. There will definitely be a retaliation because the Israeli regime uh, initiated this uh, aggression. They bombed the embassy. The Iranians uh, struck back to bring about deterrence. Then they assassinated uh, Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran. So uh, the Iranians have struck back to bring about deterrence and to end this. But the Israeli regime is insistent on repeating aggression. So I think there is absolutely no doubt that Iran will strike back and it will strike back substantially. But if Iran didn't strike back at the moment, if you called it quits, then this whole spiral of violence might be over. And that's good for everyone, isn't it? That's not what uh, Netanyahu and the people around him are like. These people are carrying out a holocaust in Gaza. They're vicious. They slaughter people every day. They have no moral boundaries and they abide by zero commitments. They don't listen to their own allies in Washington who fund the genocide. So obviously the only way for the Iranians to stop this is to slap down Netanyahu. Otherwise, uh, uh, the only other solution would be for the West to yank hard on his leash, but they're not going to do that. But Mr. Morandi, you know, you know that if there was another strike against Israel by the Iranians, and this got more serious, the Americans would inevitably get involved on the Israeli side. And that could mean the defeat of your country, of your government. No, Matt, that would be the defeat for the global economy. Because if the United States was foolish enough to get involved, the resistance in Iraq will kick the Americans out of the country. And all American bases in the region will be gone. And those regimes in the Persian Gulf that host American bases, those oil-rich dictatorships and gas-rich dictatorships, they will be seen as hostile. So you can say goodbye to oil and gas from our part of the world and goodbye to your economy. The government in Tehran. He actually mentions that if, if Israel attack Iran again with the help of the United States in a larger scale, a uh, global economy cannot take that. Iran is going to probably do what it can to just uh, halt the shipment of the oil from the Persian Gulf. Pretty much that's what he meant. And then the reporter also asked him another question about inside like inside politics inside Iran, domestic politics inside Iran. And let's see what he said about that one. The government in Tehran oppresses its own people, as we saw in recent years with the demonstrations, the peaceful demonstrations, they were brutally put down with people executed and arrested. So I wonder what you're more afraid of if this escalation gets out of hand, your own people or the United States government, either under Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. Matt, I can talk a lot about what goes on in Iran, but someone who works for a media outlet that is closing its eyes. As we speak, women are being slaughtered, not just in Gaza, but in the West Bank, in Syria, and of course, in Lebanon. Your government is a part of this genocide. And journalists who are quiet, they're all implicit. They're all implicated. And Western 
diplomats, they are all implicated. They all have blood on their hands. And no matter how much perfume of Arabia you use on your hands, that blood is not going to go away. I'm not sure if that reporter actually was happy from that question. I, I'm pretty sure he, he regretted asking that question at the end. Also, Iranian Supreme Leader Said Ali Khamenei in his speech, he mentioned that Israelis are exaggerating the attack, but downplaying the attack from us is not good too. The attack wasn't small, it should not be downplayed, and it should be looked at as what it was. And proper response, it's necessary. <laughs> He also mentioned that Israelis underestimating Iranian youth and they have miscalculated. So, but also, uh, Sayyid Ali Khamenei, Iranian Supreme Leader, in the Friday prayer right after the uh, Iranian attack on Israel, he came out and mentioned three times Iran will not rush and will not hesitate. He, he said that three times, I guess he was going to just, uh, you know, make a point to score this point that Iran will not rush and will not hesitate. What he meant was Iran is not going to rush, but our finger is not going to hesitate to pull the trigger. That, that's exactly what he meant. Actually, that's what I, I mean. This is my understanding from what he said. Mother, <laughs> توجه کنید نه تعلل می کنیم کوتاهی نمی کنیم دوچار شتاب زدگی هم نمی شیم Thank you guys for watching. See you all next time.